Okay, so next question is from our guy Ethan, uh, regular contributor at EA Sports ten three one four. Ethan, thanks, man. I always appreciate how often you're uh, you're contributing to us. Okay, so are you taking Howard Schnellenberger or Jimmy Johnson? Who do you think was the better coach, and who wins more titles if they stay? Also, how does Butch careers Butch's career turn out if he stays? So let's let's break that up. So let's start we, with we could spend an entire episode on that. Let's start Schnelly versus Jimmy. Um, I think oh, that's hard. I mean, Art Kehoe said that if Schnellenberger would have stayed, they would have like been just decorated with national championships. And I don't disagree, but I think Jimmy Johnson, um, I, I would have to pick Jimmy Johnson just because of, I mean, look at how he even transitioned Miami to like, from what Schnellenberger took him, Jimmy Johnson elevated the university of Miami to what we know them as today to the U. And then also look at the freaking assistant coaches that Jimmy Johnson had. He had guys like Dave Wanstead, uh, Ed Orgeron, um, freaking Butch Davis, like it's Schnellenberger college football, after yeah. Schnellenberger left, um, Jimmy and his Canes, his first year at Miami, they went eight and five. The f- first year that Jimmy wasn't at Miami and Dennis Erickson was there. They won a national championship. Yeah. And so, I believe if Jimmy had stayed, we win a national championship in 89, in 90, 91. I, like, it's crazy. Day, Jimmy's yeah. still on the sideline just racking up the, racking up the rings. And I'm not mad that he left because he went to my Cowboys and we won two Super yeah. Bowls and we were a dynasty. But, like, yeah. the Kane – I mean, and, yeah, even if he stayed at Dallas, like, the Cowboys and the Canes, if he would have stayed at either one of those places – for longer, it, there would be so many championships. It was insane. Like Jimmy yeah. Johnson is one of the greatest football coaches of all time. Like he for develops. Sure. He is an incredible recruiter. He has an eye for coaches. And um, yeah, I love Jimmy. Well, this episode might be boring because we're agreeing on everything. Um, yes, you're you're a hundred percent right. All due respect to Schnelli. The answer is Jimmy. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna compare this like a I'm gonna compare this to a his a historical thing, okay? Like Schnellenberger was like the ancient Greeks, okay? He he was the first to do it, you know, the first to make democracy and and the all the religious stuff and the culture and whatever. But Jimmy Jimmy perfected it and streamlined it and made it like the most the most like feared institution in the game. You know, he took Schnelli's model and just made it like, I don't know. He made it a thing. Like we're still talking about, it. we're still making documentaries about it. And I'm with you. That's, that's Jimmy's doing in my opinion. Um, well, so I, I in the, like, look at the team, like look at Jimmy's teams at Miami. Like those were the teams that people like, obviously we have such a high regard for Howard's um, 1983 team. But when people think of the U, the head coach that comes to mind is Jimmy Johnson. Yep. No, I, I agree, man. I don't, I think I might've got derailed. Did I Yeah. Jimmy was the Roman empire. Howard Schnellenberger's were the Greeks, you know, it's, it's I mean, uh, I'm a sports he, he, writer. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about either, but he, <laughs> foundation and jimmy just perfected it in my opinion so yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) (laughs) but uh yeah so then uh what are we gonna say about butch's career if he stays i think it's uh i think it's something similar um i if butch would have stayed a few more years i don't think he stays more than a year or two more but there's a lot more discipline. Like he, like Brett Romberg always said that, um, I think he, I don't know if this is the correct term, but he said that Butch had the coaches and the players asses so puckered tight because they were intimidated by him. And he, that's the presence that has been missing from the university of Miami. So it's not just like coaching 
like offensive and defensive philosophies. It's the presence that Butch Davis had that Larry Coker did not have. And then, you know, so on and so forth, that discipline and that standard was not held to the same regard. Um, and so if Butch stays, I think you just influence another generation of Miami Hurricane players who know the program and know the routine. Like it's not you come and do your own thing. Like, like you are expected to do this and this and this, and there's no leeway. Like this is how we do it at the University of Miami, and it results in wins. And you just didn't get that with Larry Coker. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm a little more sour on Butch than most people. Um, just cause like, you know, a lot of people were like pissed off and bitter at Butch for, for how the FIU game went and him faking injuries and doing all that crap and whatever. But that's like, that's textbook Butch, you know, like he's kind of a slimy dude. And, and I mean, he's been caught up in recruiting scandals and all kinds of rule breaking everywhere he's been. Um, he left us high and dry, you know, like, I don't think the Cleveland Browns were super happy with him. You know, North Carolina wasn't super happy with him. Um, man, he can evaluate talent. You know, he's he's amazing. At, he built the best team of all time. But I don't know. I, I, I do think we probably would have won a few more national championships. But I, I don't think in any scenario it ends well with Butch for us. I just don't think that's the kind of guy he is. I mean, he kind of strikes me as a dude that leaves a burned bridge every time he leaves. Yeah. Um, but then, then again, I mean, Nick Saban has had, um, you know, he yeah. left the Miami Dolphins in a bad place. I mean, certain yeah. coaches do certain things, and, like, the, some of the greatest coaches are slimy. I mean, Bill Belichick is not is no saint. Um, <laughs> yeah. Urban but, Meyer covering up murders. Yeah, Urban Meyer, yeah, and I would take Urban Meyer – Tomorrow, like today, like people talk about this and this and this, Urban Meyer would make Miami a national champion. And oh uh, yeah, we'd win. I that. mean, sometimes it's not, it's not a, like there is no Lily White clean program in college athletics, top program in college athletics. And so um, I just appreciated what Butch was able to do, um, that he was a hard ass, but he got results. Yeah. No, he did get results. I I definitely think that uh our window would have been pushed back a few years, you know, like we'd be we'd be talking about great teams into the two thousand four, two thousand five era. I just I think it would have ended bad whenever it did end. So Okay. Um next question. Let's see. Okay, this is from Anton at Hurricanes Time. Will Cheney slash Rooster attain Duke Johnson level running back presence on the field? So will Cheney or Rooster be able to be as good as Duke Johnson? I, I mean, I, it's it's this is the problem with Hurricanes fans. Like we try to compare them to all these past great players. Like who can like who cares if Jalen Knighton doesn't surpass Duke Johnson in career rushing yards? If what am I trying to say? Um, we we did not bring them in to be a Duke Johnson. I go. I don't know. I'm trying to collect my thoughts, Jordan. You go. Well, I'm uh, so I'm I'm gonna go along with it. I'm gonna go along with the question, and I'm gonna say no. Um, I think people forget how good Duke Johnson was. He was incredible. He was so incredible. I mean, he. I mean, what did he go for? Like, he he went for well over a thousand yards his uh, in 2014, um, and I mean, he was in in college football. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, they were arguing who was the better player out of him and and uh, what was the Amir Abdullah? Was that his name at, at Nebraska? Oh yeah, um, yeah. I mean, those were the two best running backs in college football. So we had. I mean, arguably RB1, you know, he, he was arguably the best back in college football for two years, you know, um, immediate impact as a freshman, um, and then just a stable presence, you know, like 
they don't really make guys like Duke Johnson. And uh, I I hope they prove me wrong. Um, but I I think Duke is more of a generational guy that just happened to be on some teams that weren't that great. I think that's a very, very good point because when – Ever, I mean, I like Duke. I'm not as big of a fan of him as others just because I was gone for some of the years that he was playing. Mm-hmm. Like, when I think of the best Miami Hurricanes running backs, like, I think of Willis McGahee. I think of Clinton Portis. Um, like, you think of the impact that Willis McGahee had the one year that he was the starting running back. Yeah. Like, Duke, John- Duke Johnson was good. But I don't. I like. I. I he was defense. Well, yeah. I bet defenses. Defenses, in my opinion, feared McGahey more. Oh yeah, yeah. I. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say Duke is like top three or four that we've ever had. But I. I would say by a landslide, he is the best back that we've had here since Frank Gore. And well, I mean, oh yeah. I mean, we love freaking Greg Cooper, but like, yeah. yeah. But hey, uh, NFL Pro Bowl running back Lamar Miller, you know, like that—that's not—that's not nothing to be, can like considerably better than Lamar Miller as a Miami Hurricane. Um, like yeah, Miller I mean, was good. I, I, I don't know anything about Lamar Miller. Like I don't remember him playing. I remember him taking a kickoff against Ohio State in Columbus, and I couldn't name you one other highlight was, from him. He was a home run hitter. I felt like I mean. I, I haven't watched his tape since he played, so this is me remembering as like a you know like a thirteen year old or however long ago this was. Um, if I remember right, he was like kind of slow between the or I guess he I don't know he didn't he didn't do what Duke did in in the stiff arms and the juking people and like making something out of nothing. But like if Miller got a hole, he was gone because he was just that much faster than everyone. So he'd break like a sixty yarder every game, and then he's kind of a straight line runner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that's kind of how his career at Miami was. Like you were always waiting for him to bust that sixty yard touchdown run, but other than that, you weren't blown away. It was only when he got in space and was you know just like just blazing through the defense. Um, that uh that you really caught notice but i don't know yeah i but dude duke was amazing i mean so many big plays catching passes out of the backfield uh i mean unstoppable and kick returns and i mean if you just watch his highlight tapes it's it's amazing how fast he is because he was a pretty big dude like he was thick for for his size yeah I'm no, don't trust me. I mean, because it was like probably like two months ago when we were having a Twitter conversation with everyone, the your top five canes of the 2010s, and Duke yeah. wasn't in mine, and I got like <laughs> crapped on. And I'm like, yeah. like, I'm sorry, he just didn't. Yeah. I, it, it's probably how a lot of people think about Brad Kaya, sadly. Yeah. Like, he's the all time leading rusher, but when you think of Miami Hurricanes running backs, I think of McGahee or Portis, Edge. Um, just like Kai, you would like you think of Ken Dorsey or Vinny, but yeah. I think Jalen Knight and Don Chaney can do incre- I think they're going to do incredible things. I think Jalen Knight and like everyone knows this, I think he's going to be a superstar at Miami. I believe he can do things that we haven't seen since uh-huh. a guy like Duke or you know a guy like Frank Gore or McGahee. Yeah. He can be a fifteen hundred yard rusher because. I mean, he's not as big as McGahee, but that speed, man, is yeah. incredible. And and he's kind of like uh, Lamar Miller. He's a home run threat. Don yeah. Chaney is probably a little bit more like Willis McGahee because he has the thickness. Uh, he doesn't run a four two eight like Willis McGahee was taped or timed at. But Chaney and Nine are going to complement each other very, very well. I think they'll be great. My my thing though is, I mean, it's like it's like a guy coming out of the NBA draft. And someone's saying, like, will he be as good as Kevin Durant? You know, like, Durant's not the greatest of all time. He probably won't ever be in that conversation. But my knee-jerk reaction is to say no because he's, an, like, he's one of the greats, you know, and he will be one of the greats. And uh, that's kind of how I view Duke is, like, he's one of the greats of our program. He's not in that very, very top tier, you know. He's, he's, he's not going to be on anyone's list of, like, top seven best canes of all time. 
But, you know, if, if someone's asking, like, is this 